Hello, this is a mini mill. Uh, lots of people have this mini mill, but it comes in various flavors of uh, the littlemachineshop.com makes one, a uh, soccer, uh, machine mart. But basically, it's all the same machine with a few variations, and they sort of paint them different colors, and well, you, it's all the same thing at the end of the day. However, there's one issue with these machines, and uh, that problem, and I'm not the only person on this planet to do this, is you have a little bar, okay? And this bar goes into the side here, so you can take off the chuck and change it for collet, or vice versa. And I have broken two cogs on this already by leaving this bar in and then switching it on, and the motor turns, but the chuck is locked, and so it grinds up another gear. Now, the uh, actual gear pieces to change it are reasonably cheap, they're okay, but it's the time. When you're in the middle of a job and you're trying to drill things and then suddenly you break another gear and you think, ah, oh, here we go. It's another three or four, maybe even five days before you get a replacement gear. So what I'm going to show you today is how not to break that gear by doing a little simple trick. And this bar will sit in there and it will turn on the power. So now the drill can work. And if you take that bar out, leave it in there, it can't work. This bar, not being in there, disables the power and uh, also keeps it in a handy place so you don't lose it. So let me show you in the video how I've just made that thing work. I've stripped the second gear now. Uh, it's one of those mistakes that you think, oh, I'll never make that mistake. Of course, I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll never make that mistake. But I've actually done it twice now. And what happens is this. If you're milling with this machine, you use collets. Okay, the collets sit in here. You take off the chuck and put the collet in, and you mill. Okay, when you want to drill, you take the collet out and you put the chuck in there and you drill bit and you drill one or the other. Now, to do that, you have to put this metal bar on the side here and turn until it clicks into place. Now, that has locked this. So then you undo this, and you unbolt this, and that falls out, and you put the collet in, so on and so forth. You get the idea. However, if you forget to take that out, and it's just sitting there, and then you go and switch it on, then what happens is the motor can't turn the... Uh, what's this piece called? I know it's a chuck. Well, this piece, anyway. The motor can't turn this piece because it's locked, and so what it does is it strips a little plastic gear. And I've done it twice, so now I'm going to try and find out a way to stop me doing that. Some people have a little flag on here. Uh, some people, me included, even tried the elastic band trick on there to sort of say, look, if the elastic band's on there, you, you sort of notice it when you... It didn't work. I've done it twice now. Fooled me twice. Fooled me... I don't know how that saying even goes. However, what I've got to try and work out here is a simple fix so that you cannot possibly do that and switch the machine on. I want to be able to go like that and the machine is disabled. So you can't turn it on until you remove that, okay? There's not really any room inside here for a switch. Uh, you could magnetize it and put a reed switch in there maybe. I don't know, that's getting a bit too complicated. I want to try and make this simple so that anybody can do this, uh, this little trick or fix. So I'm going to drink tea, look at this, and think about it. Back in a second. Right. This is the control box. So if I can uh, somehow stop the power getting to the motor, whilst that bar is in there, then that's the job done. Now, I've unscrewed this. There's only four screws. If you do this, make sure you turn off the power, etc. because if you kill yourself, don't come running to me. So looking inside it, there's actually quite a bit of space inside the box here. So I kind of, you see, I'd left that in again. I keep leaving it in there. That's the problem. So I'm kind of thinking, if I could put a hole in the top, so that the bar has to drop in to the box. And I can have something like 
a little micro switch so the bot actually activates the micro switch when it's gone in and that will connect the power so the machine can be in use. If I take that out, that will disconnect the power. Yeah, I think maybe putting that inside there and having the bar run through a hole, click power on, click power off. That's got to be the answer. So I'm going to measure up the space we've actually got in here. There isn't a lot of room, but there should be enough room to do this. It's only a tiny device. So if you imagine this is the rod and this is the edge of the plastic, of course, you've got to come in a little bit to get past that lump there where the screw goes. So these are the measurements. Now then, if I have the rod, like I say, so it can come down something and actually push the switch when the rod is fully inserted, I can make something out of a piece of wood quite nicely. You know, drill a hole in the top there, uh, cut it down, as long as there's enough space inside the box to do this, and then have all this stuff inside. But I don't want the rod to move around, so I want it to be pretty solid. And mm, yeah, that's going to work. It could work. I could make an elaborate sort of shape out of a piece of wood like that. But as I've been making all these uh, panels just recently for the uh, Moog extension that I'm working on, I'm left with lots of, piece of pieces of aluminium. So can I utilise something like this? Yes, I'm sure I can. Uh, now that will slide in nicely and I can tap it and put a couple of screws in to hold it inside the box in the right place. It's not going to take up much room, but I've got to somehow make that so it comes down in a tube and push on the little micro switch. So uh, I'm guessing, let's do this on the, on the quick and the cheap. So if I, uh, if I cut a piece, let me just get my Sharpie marker. I need to cut a piece out for this. If I roll this around this bar uh, and have that attached, I want to take a little piece of this away there so that when it rolls over, this will hold the bar in place and it will ex leave a, a gap there to expose this to the micro switch so it can push it when it gets to that point. Does that make any sense? I don't know. We'll try it anyway and see what happens. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll move on to a different idea. So, uh, chop that piece away. I'm just trying to make this so it's nice and quick and easy. And I'm sure most people who have got those uh, little milling machines will most likely have pieces of aluminium hanging around. So, let me sort of... It's not exact science, this. There you go. Take a piece out like that. Now, I want to roll that around this. Put that against the vise and just start pushing. Aha, there we go. So this piece will go inside and align that to drop nicely into there. And if we attach the micro switch so it actually switches, put two little screw holes in, then that will switch the machine off when you pull this out. Put the multimeter on. Now this will bleep when you connect the two together. I know on these micro switches, this uh, bottom piece is always the common. There you are. So without the bar in, that's not the one we want. We want the one that doesn't connect. Now when we put the bar in, connected, power on, power off. And with it being a micro switch, all the power is contained within that little unit. So nothing is transferred to the metal bar. You can't get an electric shock off it. Wonderful. Now I've got to try and figure out how to put this inside the machine because it's got to stand off 7.16 millimeters. So I've got to work out a way of getting this 7.16 millimeters away from the plastic. I've just placed a couple of uh, rubber feet spacers on here 
and they seem to be just about right. So I've just been messing about trying to line up the holes on the back here and realise it's just a box. You can take it off and turn it over. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, I had one of the screw holes lined up with the low high gear change here. But all you have to do is figure out where this is going to go. Put a piece of card there, put two little dots, make a hole, stick it on the back and there you go. There's your pattern of where to put the holes. Saying that, mm, might not work yet. But anyhow, now what I'm going to do is actually nut and bolt this together. But I have to make one of these connections has to come off and go onto the micro switch and then a jumper from the micro switch back to this. And this will disable the machine from working if the bar is not inside there. So I'm just going to make up a double spaded lead for that. Right, that was not easy to do. Trying to hold the bolts inside here while screwing that uh, screw in there and holding it all together, flapping around. This is where you need three hands. However, that I think is going to work. And don't forget, of course, you've got to disconnect one of these onto the micro switch and then off the micro switch back to here again. And that should disconnect the power. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to screw this box back on here and I'm just going to go ahead and test it and see if it actually works. But before I go ahead, let me just show you what needs changing again. Uh, this little cog here is the one that's split and that's the second time that's happened. So uh, where can I just hang that for the moment? Yeah, that'll be all right. That'll be fine. So uh, undo this cog and put on my third. You know, if you've got a, a job to do and you're in the middle of uh, doing something and then you go and screw your work up again because you've destroyed another one of these things. Yeah, it's got a little split in it there. That's why it's making so much noise. Uh, it, it's the problem that you have to wait. You have to go and order one and wait for it to arrive. And, you know, you just want to be getting on with the job. And that's why I'm sure there's a few other people on the internet with these machines that know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the time. The time. You just want to get the job done. And that's why some people just buy spares because, you know, they occasionally keep on breaking them. Right, bit of lithium grease in there. Put the nut and bolt back together. And then we'll test to see if it's working. A funny thing is though, I ordered one from the littlemachineshop.com, which is in Pasadena, USA. And then literally 10 minutes later, I thought, oh wow, I found some place in Europe, which is a lot closer to me. In fact, it's 252 miles away from me. And the little machine shop is 5,151 miles away from me. So anyway, 10 minutes later, I ordered the one from Europe because I thought it's gonna get here quicker. It was slightly cheaper. Would you believe it? The one from the little machine shop arrived two days before the one from Europe. That's 5,151 miles. Two days later, 252 miles away. But I won't say what company that was, but uh, yeah, whatever. This is powered up now and nothing's happening. It's dead, which is just what I want. So if I put this bar now uh, into there, power's up. Brilliant. Take that out, the light goes out and it doesn't work. So now I can change the chuck for the collets and not be in any danger of having the machine actually working. It's dead until I put that back in there. Brilliant. Now I can carry on making these panels for the Moog synthesizer.
Excellent. I'm happy with that. If you like that, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, I've got more videos on the way. All the best. Bye-bye.